I come to you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. There was a priest who was walking around his coffee hour in his parish, and he began to overhear a conversation of very theological in nature, whereby they were talking, how do you pray for the people in your life that you don't like? How do you pray for the people that you hate, that aren't really friendly to you, that are just mean? And someone said, well, there's a prayer that I've used for a long time. It's actually quite an old Irish blessing. And it goes something like this. Lord, for those who love us, we thank Thee. But for those who do not love us, turn their hearts. And if you cannot turn their hearts, turn their ankles. (laughs) So that we may know them by their limping. (laughs) And I thought that was a pretty interesting prayer that's actually out there that you can buy and, you know, put on your door. Because I've heard of a backhanded compliment. I've never heard up until now of a backhanded blessing. But it does beg the question of how a Christian person who follows Jesus Christ is supposed to pray for those people in their life who they don't get along with, or have trouble respecting, or don't like very much, their enemies perhaps. And when Paul writes his letter to Timothy, it takes it even a step further because it asks, how do we as Christians pray for those in authority when those in authority are not always the best people? And so if you open up your bulletin to the reading from Paul's letter to Timothy, he says, first of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions. So he's not making any distinction here among the kinds of people that we are supposed to offer prayer for. But let's take this a step further. Paul, as a Jew, was actually telling the people in the letter to pray for the authorities, like the emperor, somebody who was not exactly always kind to Israel. Apply that even one step further and think that he was saying to pray for people like King Herod and Pontius Pilate, not exactly favorites in the Gospels. And so we begin to see that Paul's letter is echoing what Jesus said about praying for those people we may consider our enemies. Well, 2,000 years later, Not much has really changed in the command to love those who we don't like or who may not like us. But I'll be darned if it doesn't get sticky, doesn't it? Because, you know, every four to eight years, a priest has to get up sometime late in November and begin to dance a very fine line down the aisle about what it means to pray for someone. And he really doesn't want to use names because no matter what you do and no matter how you preach on it, you're going to upset about 50% of the people in the room. That's why today I say every four to eight years, you have to get up and say, you know, we still have to pray for that guy. And if you didn't like the other guy that was that guy, you still had to pray for him too. But isn't it sad that we have to use that kind of language? I think the reason that we have such trouble praying for the authorities of government in in our land and why Christians have in the past as well is because we have a very specific idea of prayer and we've placed it in a very specific box about what prayer is supposed to do. And you see, it's easy to pray for someone when you like them. It's easy to pray for someone when you love them, because in our minds, it can sound like that prayer is about hoping good things for someone we care about. I mean, look at our prayer list. The people who are sick, we pray for healing. That is a good thing. And we pray for them because we love those people. But I wonder, 
What if we placed our enemies on that prayer list? Is that a signal that we're somehow praying for something good to happen to them? That's the box we've put ourselves in. The purpose of prayer is two things for a Christian. The first is we pray for the person for whom we are praying to be changed somehow. In the case of a person in authority, we are praying that that person's heart and mind and will will be changed according to the person of Jesus Christ. I mean, look back at that reading there. This is right and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. When we refuse to pray for somebody that we don't like, we are refusing to pray for their soul. We're refusing to pray that God's love and compassion and knowledge may come into their heart and mind in such a way that they are transformed. And this is important because at some point somebody said said that prayer for us. We were not born having hearts that were transformed for Christ. We needed that prayer too. You look at some of the histories of the saints, we think of St. Augustine as a great saint. The one who was praying diligently every day for him was another saint, St. Monica. So when we pray, it's not just for something good to happen to somebody else, and I certainly hope we're not praying for bad things to happen to people. You know, I've heard some prayers like, I wish that such and such person in authority would have all the time in the world to play golf because they didn't win. (laughs) Or even a worse one, is it wrong, Father, to pray for somebody to miss that first step as they're going down the stairs? I said, yes. Yes, it is. You shouldn't pray that way. Now, we say this comically, but let's be honest. In our society, the rhetoric has become such that even the thought of praying for someone we don't like can actually get us attacked. And that's a difficult idea. So the first part of praying is that the person is changed. The second part of prayer is that prayer changes us. Like I said, it's easy to pray for someone that we like, but sit down in a chair and pray for somebody you don't like. Boy, I squirm and move in that chair. I want to get up. I want to take only five seconds to pray for that person and just move on. But when I pray for that person, I recognize their humanity. I recognize the fragility of their humanity. That we're made in the same image of God, our Creator. I think of what might have hurt them that maybe turned them on the path that maybe they're not going right. I think of the suffering that they might be enduring. And then I realize that I have been changed. That perhaps there is less animosity in my heart towards that person. So here's the challenge. The challenge for us as Christians, when we go about and pray for those in authority in our land with whom we may or may not disagree, we must be clear in our prayer. Our prayer is not for them to receive greater power and gold and comfort. That's not what these prayers are about. That's not what Paul was talking about. The prayer is for their heart to be transformed by God in such a way that they become servants and have the hearts of servants. Now, for some people that we see who need our prayer, this may seem more difficult than in other cases. But just think about this. Every Sunday, in the prayers of the people, we pray for the clergy. And Lord knows we need it. (laughs) And I can sometimes imagine in some parishes that there are some people who say, I'm not praying for that priest. (laughs) And my thought to them is, no, they need it double. If you have a priest who's not doing well and not doing their job well, then they need double your prayer. So if you have a person in authority who you don't feel is doing the right thing, you should be praying twice as hard for them. 
Like I said, not to receive the comfort and gold and power, but that they might be converted to Christ. So what should our prayer sound like? Well, I kind of wrote one just in my mind that we might think about. And it says, Lord, for those who govern our earthly kingdoms, we pray that their hearts may be transformed to servants in your heavenly kingdom. And think about that image of being a servant in Christ's heavenly kingdom. And the image I want to leave you with is this one. On the last night before Jesus died, he washes the feet of his disciples and he says, I'm doing this to show you that the person in authority is to be the servant and that you should do this for one another. It's one of the reasons we do it on Monday, Thursday. Our prayer should be that our leaders have such servant hearts that they would wash the feet of the poor. That they would love others as Christ has loved them. So that hopefully we can know them by this love and not by their limping. Amen. Amen.